Okay, hello, hello, my fellow wonderful people, uh, empaths, sensitives, curios curious folks, uh, folks that share my uh, sense of humor. Um, a couple uh, questions were getting asked about remote viewing and uh, what I do and uh, you know, it's good to have an open forum as long as everyone's respectful. We don't all have to agree with some, uh, you know, we don't have to all agree. So I want to talk a little bit about the technique I use. Uh, I, uh, I use a technique called the compassion-based uh, technique. It's been used in wartime. It's an ancient technique. And it comes from, uh, you get into a very deep state of meditative relaxation and then you open your heart and you give compassion to the world. And then you begin to open your heart to the person that you're attempting to uh, communicate uh, with and uh, then they share, uh, then you're able to pick up things going on with uh, their personality or what you think or what you feel coming from them. So last night I did a remote and uh, the first uh, interesting thing was that I got into uh, Nancy Pelosi and uh, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on with Nancy. <coughs> Excuse me, still nursing a cough, I apologize. A little bit about what is going on with Nancy Pelosi. So the first thing that I uh, mentioned in the last video was that she had blocked, she blocked Trump from being able to deliver his uh, State of the Union address because according to what she said, when I got in her energy or her personality or her thoughts, which is what you enter when you enter the hive mind, the collective consciousness that Carl Jung talked about, Carl Jung was one of the psychologist that was exper experiment experimenting with the hive mind. So you get into the thought forms, the thoughts and ideas of the person that you're trying to connect with. Uh, and so that's what we did last, <coughs> excuse me, that's what I did. <coughs> and the thought was from Pelosi, no, Mr. President, no, no, you're not going to be using the house floor as a bully pul pulpit to push your uh to push your wall and push your agenda and you're not going to be stirring up your base you're not going to be using the house floor to stir up your base it's not going to be a bully pul pulpit uh to get people to uh, side with you about the wall so that was what was coming off of her when I went into the remote. So that was very curious because that was not publicly what was being said, uh, that people were, <coughs> people were not saying that about Nancy Pelosi. They were just saying that it was a power trip, but, but the purpose of the power trip was that she was taking away his ability to have a bully pulpit. She was taking away his ability to have a rally. She was not going to have a Trump style rally on the house floor. Now you can agree with her. You can disagree with her. If you're a Trump supporter, uh, you know, uh, live and let live, vive la différence. You know, everybody's entitled to an opinion. The purpose of a remote viewer is to the best of your ability to put your own personal views aside and simply feel or sense the, the and try and empathize with the other person. So that is Pelosi's uh, take on the situation. Now Congress approves the budget and Congress goes through the money with a fine tooth comb. So. Uh, she's going to be blocked from traveling to Afghanistan and from doing any traveling. What she's doing is that she is, when I remoted it, it looked to me like an audit. So what Pelosi is doing is she's going into these areas and she's auditing. The, she's auditing the military, she's checking in, and she wants to know where the money is going. So if she says, we approved, you know, a hundred million for ABC, I want to see, I want to see the books. I want to see where that hundred million went. I want to know what's going on down here in Afghanistan and do the generals, in your own words, do you feel supported here? Uh, have you been receiving everything that we okayed in the house? What are the problems and what are the problems in, that you're seeing in terms of the current budget? So that is, so basically she's going to start auditing those uh, branches, those things that were under the control of the Republican Party that the House is budgeting for, she's now auditing. 
So that what that is what Pelosi is getting on the plane and doing. She's now showing up. Hi, what a surprise! I'm here in Afghanistan. Let me see the books. So that is terrifying. If you're on the other side and you you are you believe in what you're trying to do, and now this person comes in and says, "Let me see the books. I'm not going to approve that. That money. That money." So that is that's what's going on there. So Trump responded by uh, pulling away her ability to get on a plane. Uh, she can't use a government plane. So that's the back and forth. Uh, now, I had gone into the energy of the Senate, uh, same thing, you open your heart, and went to the Senate, and I had seen Grassley. Uh, I hadn't used any things like um, speaker of that, you know, uh, head of the, I hadn't used any terms. All I can tell you is what I see energetically. And when I went energetically into the Senate, I saw Grassley sitting there waiting to hear something from the White House. And so, when I remoted it last night, it looked like the Senate is waiting to hear <coughs> from the White House what they're supposed to do. Because in the words of Mitch McConnell and in the words of Grassley, uh, it, what they said when I w went into their energy was, no, we have to be a united front. We can't be fractured. We can't be divided. We've got to stand together. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to be good. We've got to stand together as a unified front. So, yes, they passed everything because they thought that the president was going to sign the, sign the bills into law, was going to approve the budget, and then they all got on planes and went off to Hawaii or wherever, and they were going to have a very nice Christmas. And just as uh, Senator Susan Collins was about to get on her plane headed for Maine, she was told uh, that Trump was going to veto the bill, and then she said, is he trying to ruin my... Is he trying to ruin my, my holiday or ruin my day or whatever? So people had to come back. And so the reason that they had okayed and signed the bills was because they thought the president, he's with us, right? So no problem. Okay, we're all on the same page. The president's going to sign it. I can just go off to Hawaii now. Um, but then he didn't sign it. So now we're in a different situation as far as the House is concerned. Now if they sign it, they will be overriding a veto. So do you see the difference energetically between where we were at before Christmas versus now? Now they will be in opposition to the head of their party. So that is why I saw Grassley sitting there saying, well, what are they, you know, waiting for the White House to give the order to open the Senate? So it's up to President Trump whether or not the, the Senate opens because uh, Grassley and McConnell want a unified, uh, they want the party to be unified. They want the party to be unified and they they don't, they feel like, we're gonna fall apart if we don't don't come together uh, unified. This is one party, and we've got to be able. And it's with a place of compassion. I'm not uh, criticizing Grassley or McConnell or anybody. They feel we've got to hold it together. You know, we cannot fall apart right now. So they're waiting on the House, and uh, Lindsey Graham is going back and forth as the go-between between the Senate. He's the mediator between the Senate and the White House. And McConnell, he was hiding out in his hideaway, which is a small office near the Senate floor. And what he was doing is he was meeting privately with senators. Now, this is going to be done very strategically if uh, my remote is correct, which means that if they decide to override the veto, it has to be with the OK of the White House. The only way that President Trump can get out of this is if he is overridden. But if he's overridden by the Senate, there has to be a tacit agreement on the part of the White House if they go down this road. Now, I'm not saying that, that this is the future. This is the most probable outcome based on the energy of what I saw last night. But that does not mean that it's going to happen. I'm just telling you what I saw based on the energy that I saw uh, and what I feel, and I have to be true with what I see, and I have to be honest and say I'm biased, I'm only human, I make mistakes, take it with a grain of salt, this channel is just for entertainment purposes, it's uh, Tarot with Whimsy, so, but at the same time, it would be dishonest for me to not tell you what I really saw, and that is what I saw, so, if they decide to, I think only 10% of vetoes have been overridden in American Senate history, 
So now they're in a very different situation that they were in before they uh, before the holidays, because now they will go be going in opposition to the leader of their party. So I saw those three men. I, thought, I saw Lindsey Graham going back and forth to the White House, talking to the president, and then going back and communicating with McConnell. And I saw McConnell in his room by the Senate, which is the... Um, uh, hideaway, his hideaway offices, which are smaller offices where you can meet privately one-on-one -on -one with other senators. Now, Grassley and McConnell are talking to senators that are going to be up for re-election in 220 in swing states, and they're just doing a listening, and they're hearing and they're saying, what, what's it going to take for us to get to a yes? What, what's it going to take for us to get to 60 votes? The, the, uh, who can we sacrifice? Who's willing to throw themselves? If it comes to this point, who can throw themselves on their sword? Does that make sense? Does everybody getting this? So uh, if you aren't running in 220 and you plan on leaving anyway, can we get you? If, if it gets to the point where we're going to have to eat, uh, override this veto, can I get a yes from you? So they need 13 yeses. The people who are going to say, yes, let's reopen uh, the business, let's reopen the, the Senate, are those people who feel that they will either be safe in 220 or don't plan on running. So it's very strategic who they are picking off. It's going to be a select group of people for those two bills that, that they have to say yes to. And I think they have to have uh, two thirds or uh, two thirds of the vote. One vote, I think it only requires 30 in the committee. I don't, I don't exactly know how that goes. I just remote it and, and looked at it from a strategic perspective. And from a strategic perspective, they're going to request privately that those senators, if it gets to this point, that they have to override the veto. Uh, those people that can afford to say yes will say yes, like Susan Collins, etc. Now, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about cybersecurity, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some stuff I have been picking up on cybersecurity. And people have to understand that the wars that are being fought today in the world are being fought with cybersecurity. Now, it's extremely unpleasant. It's extremely unpleasant if you are doing remote viewing, if you are experimenting. I, I think everyone should does it. I think we all get into relaxed state. Every woman and every man who is watching this, right before you go to sleep at night, you've gotten into a very relaxed state, and right before you fall asleep, you sleep, you have thought about that girl or thought about that boy or thought about that situation, and then you found yourself seeing the world through that person's view and you knew precisely what they were up to. You knew he was cheating. You knew exactly what was going on or she was cheating or that person was stealing or what that, you knew. On some level, you knew. That's remote viewing. We can all do it because it's part of our innate uh, it's our nature as human beings. Is there bias? Absolutely. That's why this is for this channel and what I do as a reader. The only way morally and ethically I can do this, come back to this, is by telling people, think for yourselves, to, uh, uh, take it with a grain of salt, have fun with it. But at the same time, I'm morally obligated to tell you what I see. So I want to talk about cybersecurity. And when I am in the energy of the cybersecurity, what it looks like. It it. It feels like a constant high-pitched noise in my ears. That is the best way to describe cyber attacks. It's like a constant, you know, that is, that is what a remote viewer feels when, when they go in. Give it a try and then let me know what you think if you, if you are experimenting with remote viewing. It feels like the American security, our cyber security is constantly under attack 24 hours a day, hundreds and thousands of times. We are constantly under attack and our intelligence agencies, which have a whole branch devoted to this and are constantly upgrading their technology are constantly squashing attacks and they keep trying to crack the shell and get in. And that is what I see. It's this constant 
until hoping to crack, hoping to get in, and 24 hours a day we are blocking and catching. And it almost feels like they're trying to crash our system. That is the best way to describe the cyber attacks. Now, that means that countries that are poor, that cannot afford this kind of high-tech security are gonna be vulnerable. Uh, if they don't have the millions and billions necessary to keep upgrading their cyber security, they will be vulnerable to cyber attack, which means that they are going to be at the mercy of whoever ha wants to topple their government. And with that is very, very scary. I'll go ahead and throw some cards, but I want to tell those people who are in Great Britain. Um, I'm thinking of Churchill when Churchill talked about this is our finest hour. This is our finest hour. I feel like Britain uh, has some of the best cybersecurity in the world um, when I remote view it. And um, I really have faith in Britain. I, um, so I just wanted to do a, a, a toss on Britain. Uh, they're going to go through a really rough time coming out of this Brexit because they underwent their own, own cybersecurity, their own hackings, and their own attacks from uh, Russia. But I feel like they're going to be okay. And um, I just have faith that uh, Britain is going to uh, save the day yet again. And um, there's a lot going on politically in Britain right now with the, the, with the Brexit. Um, but I just have faith that a Britain's going to come out of this. And um, I have faith in their intelligence agencies. So I just want to check on Britain. Uh, to those uh, people who watch this, this uh, channel who are from Britain, um, energetically, it just looks like you have amazing cybersecurity. You, you know, um, let's take a look. Let's, let's look at the cards here. Two base cards, and you can see victory, ace of swords, and you can also say, see uh, three of wands, which is trade. This came up the last time I looked at Britain. This is open borders, trying to get your trade out, going over the waters, trade, 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 open, victory, ace of swords. I don't see closed borders here. I see open borders between Britain and, and uh, Europe. That's why I keep thinking, if this is Brexit, it looks like a really open version of Brexit. Um, temporarily, certain things are on hold with uh, Britain. Um, contract is over. This is what I got last time with uh, Brexit. This is the contract. This is... There's also a more choreo uh, coordination going on between the United States intelligence agencies. There's, intel there's a communication between the intelligence agencies in the United States and Great Britain traveling to the United States, intelligence agency persons traveling to the United States and communicating with people in the United States. Um, the only way I can describe this is I feel like Britain is going to uh, save the day. I'm also concerned about France in terms of security. I'm concerned that the cyber attacks that I'm seeing are, they are on full force against France. Uh, I see Macron getting hit really, really hard. And so for that reason, uh, they need backup. They need help from Great Britain. So everybody's under attack. It's extreme cyber attack. And it looks like um, France needs a lot of help. I, I worry that Macron can barely hold, hold down the fort. And uh, those, as I said before, uh, countries that don't have the economic ability to do so uh, are, are vulnerable to uh, getting hacked. But because Great Britain is so strong, 
uh, she may be able to uh, intercept and offer some assistance in, in terms of cyber attacks so that that doesn't happen. But it's a very vulnerable time right now for France. I'm, I'm worried for France. I'm worried for France. I'm, I'm worried for Spain. I'm worried for Greece. They're very vulnerable and they're very vulnerable to cyber attacks. Um, and I think that what we're going to see in the next six months is Britain's going to work it out with, with, with Brexit. They're going to work it out. Either Brexit is going to completely collapse or it's going to be an extremely open version of uh, Brexit. It's not going to be closed. It's not going to be what the initial proposal was. This is a very, very open borders, open trade, and that either means that Brexit will collapse or it means that it's a very, it's Brexit light. It's extremely light Brexit. Those, those are the most likely outcomes. And in terms of cybersecurity, look to Britain in 2019. And if anyone's gonna sa save the world, uh, it's gonna be Britain because I see Britain helping France and uh, also sharing information with the United States. And um, I, I think that we're gonna come out of this. I think we're gonna come out of this uh, I know that Linda Comanche has said that she predicts that everything's going to be okay. I think that we have to think positive thoughts, but from as a remote viewer, that's what I see. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. And if you don't believe it's okay, if you don't believe, and if you're just having fun with this channel, then that's absolutely okay. And uh, we make mistakes and we all have bias. When we try to open ourselves with love to other people, Hopefully we can put our own bias and our own agenda aside and simply accept the other person uh, as they are. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be well.